Welcome to another episode of Weird Beard Fishing, y'all. I'm gonna change it up from my normal routine of only going out and, you know, fishing. Uh, today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the Columbus Fishing Expo, which I had just went to yesterday. And uh, if you followed me on Instagram at Weird Beard Fishing, you would have saw all the stuff that I've already purchased there, and maybe some of the stuff that might have been going on there. Uh, so today, I'm going to talk about the things that I purchased and why I purchased them, and about some of the good deals that are going on. So to dive right into it, I'm going to start off with some of my musky baits. Usually the Columbus Fishing Expo is somewhere that I get things pretty cheaply. I mean, probably close to half off or things that you can't even normally find. Which, uh, starting off, this is one of those things. This thing is made by Thunderhawk, which I've never even heard of. But this thing right here has caught me quite a few muskies. And this year I saw this in a different color that I had not seen before. They had a perch color, which the muskies seem to go crazy for, at least where I fish. they. They completely love, they completely love the perch. Uh, which, staying with the perch theme, uh, this is one of the Lucky Craft pointers in the perch color. And the biggest muskie and the most muskie I think I've ever caught was actually on this lure right here. Which if you guys were subscribed to my channel, then you would have seen that this lure right here had caught me two musky in back-to-back -back casts, and I believe on the third one, I I actually broke this off. That's when I decided to go to 80-pound braid instead of 50-pound braid. And, you know, um, knock on wood, I haven't lost any more fish. And so the next cool thing that I found, which, uh, I mean, this is something that is usually uh, fairly cheap, but... I still thought it was extremely cool. I got this for $3 out of like a bargain bin where they you kind of rummage through a bunch of older used stuff, but I thought it was pretty cool. It looks like a goldfish and, and uh, this catches their attention. It's uh, jointed plastic uh, with some red treble hooks and a, a wake style bill. So I think this will probably get me bit. Uh, quite a bit. And I thought the cool thing was that the front treble hook lays flat with the body instead of like the back one. Actually, you know what? The back one does the same thing. Instead of it being like this, like most baits, where it just doesn't want to necessarily sit anywhere and it flops around, this thing runs true to the body. The next cool thing I found was this big inline spinner, which, if you musky fish, you know that these things cost quite a bit. Most of the time you, you find them for, you know, in between 15, but usually the $15 ones are never this big, um, but probably around 20 to $30. And I was able to pick this up for $4. So to me, I'm, I'm all about bargain fishing. I don't normally spend a whole lot of money. But as I'm getting deeper into um, this YouTube thing and I'm really wanting to experiment with some of the more expensive things that a lot of people have uh, questions on, which we'll get to that later in the video because I spent quite a bit of money at the expo, a lot more than I was expecting to, but it's all worth it. I'm going to give you guys some reviews and uh, if I don't like the stuff, I can always sell it. Maybe I'll sell it to one of you guys. Um, Chatterbaits, which I do extremely well on. Some of these I don't necessarily see all the time. Um, like this one, it's it's like a uh, sexy shad color. Uh, and this one is a green pumpkin and watermelon mix with a uh, purple and green flake. I think that'll be uh, looking pretty good. And then this one is like a, a Texas craw color. It's the stuff that I don't normally see up here in most of our average stores like, you know, Dick's, Walmart, or anything that's close to me. So I thought, why not buy it? And these things were only $3.50 a piece. 
So you can't beat that, especially when you go to a store and they're, you know, even for these originals, they're still probably about $7 a piece. These things are about half off. And then the next chatterbait that I had got was something that you're not even going to see up here because it's a saltwater chatterbait. And this is something that I had used on a trip when I was down in Florida when I was a kid uh, with my grandpa. And it was the first time that I had actually ever used a chatterbait. And I thought this thing was just awesome and I've never seen them again. And continuing on the theme of chatterbaits, here's something that I thought was really cool. I have never seen this. This is called Spring Bill. This thing was made in 1987. So this thing has survived a lot, I would definitely say. It's one of the coolest things I, I've seen. And I'm going to give it a try. I'm not going to keep it. I don't care if this thing is uh, basically antique. I'm going to put a new skirt on this thing, and I'm going to give it a try. This thing has kind of like a, uh, a, a, a bill, like a crankbait in the front. I don't know if this thing is going to dig down or if it's going to stand up like a chatterbait and wobble through the water, which that's probably my guess, and that's why it has a blade on a wire over the back of it. And like I said, I, I like really cool finds like this. You're not going to find them everywhere. I mean, you could probably look on eBay. Like, if I do really good on this, I'll probably look on eBay, and I'll probably buy a bunch of these. And here, I'll take the price tag off for you. So most places you buy spinnerbait, buy a chatterbait, buy whatever, they're on average between five and seven dollars. Even if you find these at an antique shop, they're probably going to want even more. Here at the show, it was a dollar fifty. So yet again, looking for a bargain. And it was the same thing with this spinnerbait that I found right here. This looks like a homemade spinnerbait. Somebody had glued on an eye. Looks like something that they poured themselves. Has a nice light wire. I prefer a nice light wire. I feel like it gives it more of a thump. Then I also found these. I figured spring is right around the corner and found some nice little red square bills. And they were $2 a piece, yet, yet again, in a bargain bin. Which, if you guys are ever looking for these things, it's called Max Bass. I have a few of these, but they were like perch colored or blue yellow colored. I had found these in Myers, And on a budget, it, these things are awesome. They're probably about $3. I, I mean, I'm not going to spend $10 on a Rapala, Lucky Craft, or whatever crankbait to go out and lose it. I want something that I'm not going to be afraid to throw in the cover, to throw in the rocks, and bang them off of the rocks. That's what these things are made to do. Get a reaction strike. you got to have something that you're not afraid to throw into that cover. And back on to the topic of chatterbaits. I've never seen these before. I guess Vic Coomer, which if you guys aren't from Ohio, you probably haven't heard of Vic Coomer. But Vic Coomer makes a lot of nice stuff for a very good price. And... This chatterbait has a small blade, but the cool thing is, it is fixed to the head. It does not have the O-ring in between the blade and the head. I don't like that. It seems like the blade doesn't want to move near as much, and it doesn't move near as fast. So as soon as you pick this thing up off the bottom, or as soon as you throw it out and you start retrieving, it wobbles. Now the other cool thing I found about this is that it actually has like an EWG hook as something that you can make weedless. It doesn't have a fixed hook like all the other chatterbaits. And which I guess they have, Z-Man has came out with something like this, but not at Vic's price. I got these things for $3 a piece at the show. So it's just something that I figured it's definitely worth a try. Now going to this next company, which I've never heard of, it's called The Hook Set, which is, and then they have their website on here, thehookset.net, um, which I'll open this here for you. Uh, they have a very, very good price on all of this stuff. Uh, Alabama rig. That is a lot of blades. There is two blades on every arm, four out, outskirting arms and then one center arm in the center. 
The head's got a pretty good color on it. I like how the blades aren't super, super flashy because there's so many of them. Uh, but these things were only $5 a piece. And if you had bought five, th what was it? five things, it was five things for $20. So I bought two of their Alabama rigs. I got a really cool colored square bill. The next things, oh yeah, this was the other things that I bought with the Alabama rigs and that square bill. These underspins are definitely different. I got both 3 8 ounce. It is a double underspin. It has a single wire going out of the bottom down to a forked wire with a piece of solder holding that center, which I could see that maybe eventually giving way and this will move, but that actually might be pretty cool. Having the blades be able to freely move up and down on a underspin, which yet again, that's pretty cool. Something that I've never seen and I'll be giving a try and yet again, if I do good, then I'll definitely be ordering some more. And while we're talking about underspins, I found some other ones. These underspins are pretty cool. They're by Gambler, which Yet again is another thing that I never heard of. That's the reason why I went to the expo because I could find things that I'm not normally going to see and try and expand my horizons on, on what I fish with. It is a underspin that has a double head. The bottom head holds on the blade and then the top head is where your swim bait goes. And it's something that you know keeps the blade down and away from the bait. Because otherwise, sometimes if you get like a road runner head, that, that blade will kind of bounce off the body and not want to spin correctly. So this will actually look like it's two fish swimming together. So the next things I found were a knockoff Whopper Plopper. And this is by Thorny Creek. These aren't the cheap Whopper Ploppers that you see on like Wish or Amazon or anything like that. Um, those ones have a slanted eye, which if you go on Wish or if you go on eBay, Amazon, whatever, you can tell by the eyes. I went ahead and I bought one because I thought, man, why not? They were only like $2 on Wish. And as soon as I got it, and then the first thing I did is throw it out, and boom, it didn't want to turn. Though actually the whole body of the bait would turn. The tail would freeze up and then the whole body would, you know, turn. These are Vic Coomers, which I was talking about earlier. He has an awesome price. I have caught a whole lot of everything on these things, especially this color. This sexy shad color, if you guys have watched any of my other videos, which you guys can subscribe to my channel right now and go and look at all these other videos. These things right here caught a lot of guy in the Scioto River. I don't know what it is about that color, but they just chomped it. I also have done good in ponds, so these things right here were only a dollar per pack. Yeah, a dollar, and there's five of them. These things probably run, realistically, if you're looking at another company, that's, a fi that's five dollars right there. They charge about a dollar per swim bait. And as a, you know, for a dollar, you can't beat it. So I got a bunch of nice screw-on swim bait heads brand and I bought a bunch of these these things were only a dollar per pack there's five of these things in here and they're three eighths ounce these things are probably realistically five to yeah, I'm gonna say five dollars usually it's a dollar per head five or six dollars in the store so at a dollar a piece you're saving a whole lot of money and then we're gonna get into some of these other things I bought that I don't normally fish with. These are all smaller things. Like this thing is an eighth ounce bucktail jig and it's a really cool color. I'm going to be trying to do a little more uh, creek and river fishing so I figured I'd get some other smaller stuff and this right here is a nano jig. Really tiny. Get those small mouth to react you know, in the small creeks and everything that's pretty close to me because that's what I have time to do. A uh, little eighth ounce, maybe put a small swim bait on the back of that and it looks like a small shad or a creek chub or whatever. 
and hopefully this can get bit because it'll be something kind of basically like a Ned rig, but with a skirt. Oh, yet again, bargain bin, a dollar. It's something that I, you won't find here. This is Hurricane Salt Tackle. So this is made for salt water, probably something that you'd find in Florida or along the coasts. It's pretty cool. It comes as a double rig. It looks like a, a Ned rig, but it's on a hair jig. And it is a double rig that you just tie on. Everything's already tied, and it has 20 pound monofilament as the leader. And I was like, you know what, for a dollar, why not try it? So then I also got some more things for trout fishing, which I'm also going to try and do a little more also. This thing was really, really cool. This thing is an inline spinner, but it's a fly. You can see on the back of it, it's a fly. Hopefully you guys can see, hopefully it's focusing. All these clear little creeks that will pique their interest. You know, and of course, yet again, bargain. That thing was two fifty. this was a dollar, two dollars, and two dollars. These things run probably, you know, four or five bucks in the store. Even if these things are older, they're still brand new. They're still, they're still unopened in packages. And while we're on the topic of trout fishing, I bought two new rods for trout fishing. Both of these I have not seen. This one especially. This one right here is made by HT Enterprises Incorporated, which yet again I've never heard. And the uh, model is Total Touch Series SX. It is a six foot ultralight. Now this should be perfect for wading through creeks and looking for some of these smaller stocked trout. The cool thing is, that's the real seat. The real seat is literally not even touching the rod at all. So as you're holding your hand here, the only thing that you're holding on to is the rod itself. How sensitive this thing is, especially for it being a two-piece, this thing really feels. And yet again, it was a bargain find at some of the places, you know, some of the same places I found some of these other things. This was the listed price, $12. He gave it to me for $10. I didn't even ask for any money off. He's just like, I, I'll give it to you for 10 bucks. Oh, okay, sir, I will definitely take that. I probably should have bought multiple, but I was already spending a lot of money. So then the next thing that I got for trout fishing, which that's the ultralight, this one is just a light, an Akuma Cellulo which is a two-piece, seven-foot light rod. Something just a little bit heavier if I want to go for something like brown trout or something like that, and also a little bit longer to make some farther casts. And this thing, yet again, was an extreme bargain find. It was $20. They were asking $24. They just gave it to me for $20. And yet again, this is something that's brand new. It's never been used. The uh, uh, tags are on it. Brand new Akuma rod. I also bought a Lose Mock Smash, which this just came out, and I've seen uh, a few good reviews of it, but I figured why not give another. You could always use another opinion. And I'm going to tell you my honest opinion of this Mock Smash. Now, you guys have seen where I have the Lose Infinity, and it's one of my favorite favorite setups for just going out, going to the river, going to the pond. It casts extremely far. It definitely actually does better than some of my more expensive setups. And I definitely think this is worth a buy. I got this at the show for only $100. Now the Xfinity at a store is $89.99. Well, after tax and everything, you're coming close to 100 this is usually, I think, $129.99. So for 100 bucks, it was definitely a deal. I love the color of this thing. And like I said, I love the Lose Reels. These things cast a mile. They seem to last quite a bit, and they will definitely crank in some fish. When I was talking about spending a lot of money, and usually, normally, I don't, this is the expensive thing that I bought. I have been wanting a DC reel ever since the first time that I ever saw one, before they even came out with the Corrado DC. 
back when it was just the Japanese reels that you could get. Well, I saw that they came out with the SLX DC, and I saw they came out with an 8.2 to 1 gear ratio, and they gave me a, a, a very good deal. Uh, they gave me 15% off of $189.99. So after tax and everything, I got this for $173. Now, I even looked on eBay and other, other places because yet again, I'm a bargain shopper. Even when I spend a lot of money on one thing, I'm going to see where I can get it the cheapest. And there was nowhere cheaper unless I ordered it from China, which I don't trust because it's a Japanese reel. It's not a Chinese reel. They're probably counterfeits. And you guys can probably hear the, maybe, yeah, a little bit. You can hear the chip inside of this thing. Um, I'm extremely excited to go out and test this. And yet again, I'll have a review video on this itself. Um, I rarely spend this amount of money, especially only on a reel, but I have to see what all the hype is about. And last but not least, I also supported a local company, which you can tell by this hat right here. This is Good River, Good River Outdoors, located here in Ohio. The cool thing is, is that, uh, they actually recognized me when I was there, and um, I, I really, I really appreciate that they actually take the time out of their day, which you know they have to be busy. They own their own company and do all of those things. So for them to take their time out of their day to watch my videos and um, follow my Instagram and everything is extremely cool. And this is where I'm going to sign off. I figured I would just give you guys a, a general idea of what the Columbus Fishing Expo is about and all the great deals that you can have. So, until next time, I'll catch you on the next episode of Weird Beer Fishing.